Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the new trading week. I hope you all had a very pleasant weekend. This week will be very interesting uh, to see what will happen to the price of oil because on the 28th of September this week, Wednesday, Algeria, there will be an oil conference. The Saudis already said that they want to um, uh, host a side conference um, along that main conference there in Algeria together with Russia to talk about any um, steps they could take actually to cap the price or cap the production of world production of oil. The United Arab Emirates already warned that um, the, um, what the world market for oil needs is um, not, not something that is a quick solution but something that is more um, lasting and so everybody should be cautious not to do something that is a quick fix to any problems that might be there because low prices could be too low so there could be a quick fix that's what the UAE's their United Arab Emirates warned actually so on the 28th of September there will be the oil conference in Algeria and there will also be Mario Draghi visiting the lower parliament in Germany, the Bundestag, he will hold a speech there. Um, German finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble already demanded um, that um, lawmakers um, are urging Tragi to take a tough or take um, or that um, lawmakers take a tough stance with Mario Tragi and his zero rate policy. Schäuble um, has repeatedly said that low rates squeezed savings for Germans and created excessive liquidity in the markets. And that is a risk in his opinion. And so Mario Draghi is um, in the crossfire here on the 28th of September in Berlin. Then there was Moody's um, over the weekend cutting the uh, credit rating of Turkey to chunk. The lira could Go, go even weaker? That's a big question. If you look at the price of the euro versus the lira, the dollar versus the Turkish lira, then um, the, the lira, of course, has weakened uh, quite a bit in the past um, uh, months and quarters. Moody's thinks that there is a risk of sudden disruptive reversal of foreign capital flows into Turkey. Then there is a more risk of a more rapid fall in reserves. And in the worst case, there could be, um, in, in the worst case scenario, a balance of payments crisis could emerge in Turkey. So there's even worse things to come, or the risk of those have increased. And so they cut the rating, a credit rating of, of Turkey to chunk. Then, of course, I was on vacation just last week, so just some words to the Federal Reserve and their decision to hold rates where they were. There were three dissenters, actually. Um, of course, Rosencrantz was one of them. And that is quite unusual, actually, because normally there's one dissenter and not three. Um, uh, Rosencrantz, if you remember back just some weeks ago, caused a heavy correction in the Dow Jones, several hundred points um, uh, continued selling on that day where he said that actually a September hike could be in the cards. And um, now the Fed has held rates where they are and so they avoided any correction continuation. But the economy is still weak, so equity prices are lifted back to pre and Queen speech levels, roughly. But from here, Let's see, normally potential is limited because actually um, the economy is still weak. The industrial um, manufacturing sector in the United States is still in recession. There are signals that the services sector and consumption is weakening. And so that's somewhat dampening the mood on Wall Street right now. And as well as there were three dissenters, a hike in December has become more probable. On the other side of the globe, the Bank of Japan has um, announced more easing, verbally at least. But those new verbal announcements are incompatible with their um, old announcements. They said that, and that was the new part, 
they buy as many bonds as possible or, or as less as few bonds as possible or necessary to keep rates at zero. So they will buy, uh, do anything they need to keep rates at zero. And at the same time, they said they want to maintain $786 billion of uh, treasury buys per year. But if you really think that through, that's not really something that is compatible because if there is less demand, they have to buy more than $786 billion. And if there is more demand, they will have to buy less. So that's not compatible and that somehow, at least that's how Bloomberg put it, is um, signaling a deepening divide of opinions within the Bank of Japan. And as we got three dissenters, which is quite unusual in the latest Fed decision, there is also a deepening divide of opinions within the Federal Reserve. But directions are different. The Bank of Japan is leaning more towards more easing, while the Fed is leaning more towards a hawkish stance.